Hey guys, this is Hero from Iji Warrior Lifestyle. I've been here in Japan for about two weeks now, and I think it's about time you guys see what I drive on a daily basis. So, just like most car enthusiasts that come to Japan, or at least if you watch Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift, you'd come to Japan with this grand idea of owning a car that could do mad skids, go make donuts at the parking lot, or probably go race at the mountains like Initial D. And well, this car is just it. It's actually JDM, very JDM, and it's rear-wheel drive with a four-wheel drive option. So, it's a drift car. Or maybe not. And here comes the big reveal. It's a key truck. Well, there's really not much to say about the car. Well, it has wheels. It has an engine that makes like 600 cc. And it's, a, it's two door. It's rear wheel drive. It has this huge compartment at the back. It's a drift car. It's, and it's very freaking cold outside. Just take you guys on a little tour real quick and get this over with. So, there's really nothing much to say about the car. Well, it's everything's pretty manual. Everything is just manual. It has a speedometer. There's no tachometer. Well, it goes up to 120 kilometers, eh? Does it make power? Yeah. I guess so. Nah, no, just kidding. It's slow as turtle. <laughs> and moving on, well, of course, we have the steering wheel. It's basically a manual, so of course we have that, and we have this. Nothing much to explain after that, except that it comes with an air cut. Additioning with heater options, because we are in Japan. Well, there's a stereo that oh, actually works. I'm going to turn that off, because I don't want to listen to anything right now. Uh, it has loads of compartment. I'm not sure what this is for. Yes, that is uh, Well, the people who used to ride the car loves to smoke. And yeah, actually, one of the things that I find really amusing about the car is the fact that it has so much compartment. Uh, we have the side compartment, we have this area, we have the glove box, we have this, and then we have something here, I'm not sure what this is for. And there's this, there's this, and there's this. There's also a space down there and cup holders that looks more like an ashtray nowadays. And this little thing that I'm not really sure what they're all for. Oh yeah, here. Here's the 4WD option. Just adjust this little thing here, and you can drive four-wheel drive. And aside from that, there's pretty much nothing else. It has lights, it has wipers, it has oh, you know, just about anything that you'll see in a regular simple car. I have nothing much to show you anymore. Just flickering switches and all its simpleness. And of course, we have a big trunk up at the back. Sorry for the fog, though, guys. It's raining. So, this is your typical Japanese K truck. It is actually a Suzuki Carry. As the name says, it's, it carries a lot of stuff at the back 
probably also why it has so much compartments inside it. Because it loves to carry. So now we're going to move on with the pros and cons of owning a K truck. So in my personal opinion, there are no cons in actually owning a K truck because you won't be getting a K truck if you're planning to go on a family vacation or if you're going to race on the track or maybe if you're planning to do mad skids, you just won't be able to with the K truck. So if you're going to get the K truck, it probably would suit your needs or it's just because you have this weird fetish of owning a K truck for some weird reason and so moving on first one we have that this car is very JDM as it is number two it's very efficient fuel economy wise it's very very efficient it has a 0.6 liter engine and and this very light and small and compact chassis number three it's very easy to drive it's very light it has a power steering and it has its engine mounted down bottom not on the front so it's easier to actually maneuver or even park whatsoever and it's very you know um, just very that it's very small so it fits practically anywhere number four k trucks are very affordable yeah, that's it. Number five, believe it or not, it requires pretty much zero to a little bit of maintenance. Well, in my experience, our company had a lot of K trucks before, and well, we just keep on swapping them out, and so it's the same as for this one. And we've, well, I've rarely seen, or actually, I've never seen. Them. The company can do any sort of maintenance for the key trunks we just I guess we just don't we just leave it as it is so and it's okay that way so yeah it's very reliable very durable we run them to the ground and we just sell them off after three or five years and then we just get a new batch and that's just about it we never do oil changes or even check the coolants or whatever we don't do any of it like seriously they're that kind of tough little bastards that's what they are tough little bastards so with that said guys it this ends the whole reveal and actually the short review of what I think about the K truck and so this ends the review and the actual reveal of the K truck and if you guys want to stay tuned for the next probably the next one we'll be doing a review for it this guy right here yes it's a Peugeot RCZ so if you want to catch that next time better stay tuned ciao